Hello everybody. So in this video, we're going to have a look at a specific claim that uh, flat earth people have, uh, another lie that they tell themselves. And specifically, it's got to do with moonlight. So let's have a look at some of their claims. Firstly, the moon has its own light. Secondly, that moonlight is cool. So in other words, they have a cold light that actually produces something called cold. And then they say that the moon is transparent. So you can see stars through the moon. And then finally, they talk about the moon um, uh, is a disk, in other words, it's not a sphere. So let's have a look at some of these uh, claims in a bit more detail and learn a bit, a bit, a bit of physics along the way. Okay, so let's have a look at first of all to get this to to work out why this is nonsense. Let's have a look at uh, at this first claim. Moon has its own light. Well, before we even get into the physics, there's a few fundamental questions that flat earth people must be asking themselves. Chief of this, uh, among this, is going to be who turns off the moonlight during the lunar phases? Because clearly the moonlight gets progressively less and less during the lunar phases until it reaches a new moon, there's none, and then uh, you get a full moon, uh, which is uh, at the other side, which is uh, all of the light that the, the moon uh, is able to reflect. So if the moon has its own source of light, how does that light get turned off and on? What determines how that light gets turned off and on? Okay. Now, the moonlight is cool. In other words, what they're saying is that the moonlight produces some sort of cool energy. Um, so light is photons. And so what they're suggesting is there's a different type of photon, if you like, coming from, uh, from the moon compared to the type of photons that's coming from the sun. Clearly they must be different uh, if the moonlight is cool and from the moon and hot from the sun. So while we go through this, I would like you to give that some consideration. Think about that claim. So firstly, let's have a look at what is light. Now, as I mentioned, Light uh, is photons, but light behaves like waves and, and a particle, if you like, simultaneously. So we're trying to think about light and photons as packets of wavelets. So let's have a look at what is light. So what we'll have a look at is, so light is really just a small part of the, of the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, so I'll write that down over here. That's electromagnetic spectrum. Now, the electromagnetic spectrum stretches all the way from radio, which is very, very long wavelengths, all the way to gamma rays, which are very, very short and... Um, uh, and very energetic uh, waves. They're all the same stuff, they just have a different wavelength and frequency. So what you get in the x-ray machine is the same stuff as what you get in light, the daylight. The difference between those two is the x-ray is much, much more energetic and able to pass through 
um, uh, uh, opaque things like you, um, not through others like lead, whereas visible light is not, um, is not uh, energetic enough to be able to do that. So, what we'll focus on is the section we call visible light. So, let's have a look here. Visible light starts on the one side of the spectrum. So this is the, where the wavelength is longest. So where the width, where wavelength is longest, it starts um, at red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Now, um, I didn't have a yellow pen, so I've just sort of outlined that, but the Y means... Hang on, there's a video going on in here. Thank you. Okay, so there's... Um, so, yellow is the... Um, uh, I've missed out on yellow because I just didn't have a, a yellow pen to do that with. But anyway, so you can see from here... Uh, the light is wavelengths, so, so we've got um, uh, long wavelengths over here. Now, if we were looking at wavelengths at radio uh, uh, waves, they would be kilometres. But these here, these wavelengths here are nanometers. Okay, that's a billionth, a billionth of a metre, a nanometer. So, 504 uh, nanometers... Um, is, is a, we're talking about nano, meaning 10 to the minus 9. Okay. All right, so let's have a look at uh, um, here. We have uh, less energy as we, uh, as we head towards the larger wavelength, the longer wavelength, and much, much more um, as the wavelength decreases. So decreasing wavelength as we head towards... Uh, uh, the violet section part of the spectrum and increasing frequency as we head towards the violet uh, part of the spectrum. So over here we have more energy and less energy. So by now you would have already worked out that the photons, the packet, the, the wavelets if you like, there is only one type. So if the moon had cool light, where does it fit over here? This is the entire, this is the, the, the visible light spec, uh, portion of the, of the electromagnetic spectrum. Much more energy here, less energy here. like my phone's going off, so just a minute while I check this. Okay, I'm back again. Alright, so... Now, the other thing about this, uh, this visible light uh, spectrum, if you add all of these um, wavelengths together, you get light, white light. So that's the kind of light that you used to, that I can see coming from, the, uh, from these um, uh, strips up here. Uh, that's white light. And that white light is a combination of all of these... Uh, wavelengths. Okay, and again, there is no special photons of white light. So this white light, uh, the, this ir irradiation comes with two things, a heat, so we experience heat, uh, heat energy, and we experience light. So these two things that uh, that we experience coming from the sun, or maybe uh, an incandescent globe, um, stuff like that. 
Okay. So let's move on. Um, cool. What does cool actually mean? So cool actually means lack of heat. In other words, things are cold because they lack heat energy. There's less heat energy, so therefore they cold. And there is no such state as cold. So cold itself is just a description that we use that describes lack of heat. Okay, temperature starts from absolute zero. So that means zero Kelvin. So when we talk about negative temperature, we're talking about the Celsius scale or the Fahrenheit scale that uh, where uh, zero starts somewhere in between, uh, in the middle of the scale, if you like. Well, when we're actually talking about temperature, we're talking about temperature as starting from absolute uh, zero, that means uh, no heat at all, until, uh, you know, um, infinity, infinite uh, um, amount of heat. Okay, so temperature difference in shade and no shade happens regardless of the moon or not. So one of the um, things that the flat earth people use is, um, is they uh, use a, a laser temperature gauge, uh, put one object in, if you like, um, uh, out in the moonlight and another uh, object in uh, something that's covering the, the moonlight, so the, so the shade if you like, and they notice that there's a, a difference in temperature. Well, that would be hardly surprising uh, given that, that heat uh, from object is more likely to be trapped underneath the shade if you like, than, than uh, the stuff that's, uh, that's out in the open. Now, it's quite easy to show that this has nothing to do with the light of the moon because this disparity between one temperature and another happens regardless of whether the moon is there or not. The other thing about the, the moon is, um, and let's get back to this idea that the moon is transparent and that... Uh, you can't land on the moon as it's such. You can't put things on the moon. Well, there are retro reflectors on the moon. There's actually five of them now. Uh, one um, was put there just one was put there just a um, a short while ago. And the reason that it got there is because um, uh, is because the uh, the spacecraft that uh, that that ISRO sent to the moon. Um, had a rover on it, and on that rover was also a new retro reflector. Unfortunately, um, all of that came to grief, so even though the retro reflector is there, it's of no use to us. But there are four on the moon, and um, we have access to at least two of them. Now, so uh, that uh, those retro reflectors are used to bounce, um, to bounce, laser pulses from the moon, uh, either high energy uh, green or blue laser pulses. And so pulses are sent to the moon and then we know we, we get those pulses back because they match the wavelength and the frequency and the wavelength that, w that these pulses were sent to the moon. So we know that the pulse that we're getting back is the pulse uh, comes from the laser that we sent. Now, if we measure the, uh, the time that it takes for each pulse to come back, we can look at the frequency, we can look at its wavelength, we can determine 
uh, using that, uh, its velocity, how far the moon actually is. And because of that, we've worked out that the moon is actually um, moving away. So its orbit, its orbit is changing, it's getting wider, and it's doing that by about, um, well, a few centimetres a year. So I think it's four centimetres a year. Okay. So uh, from this little talk, you can see now that there are no special photons uh, that are cold. Photons are photons. They exist on this electromagnetic spectrum. There is no special photons coming from the moon. If we, if we use a spectrometer and, and analyze the, uh, the light that comes from the moon, we can see that it's exactly the same visible light that comes from the sun. We know that because we can actually see this visible light spectrum, this, this section of the visible light. We can actually see that, we can measure it. We know how much of each of these uh, colors they are. Okay. There is no special electromagnetic um, spectrum for the moon. This should now be pretty obvious to you that moon having its own light just on the basis of this is absolute nonsense. Okay, just uh, as a matter of interest, let's uh, discuss some things about visible light as, as it is. So if you have a look at the board here, that first one is red. And you've got to ask yourself, why is it red? Why do you see it red? Why do I see it red? So if you're not colorblind, you'll see that this is red. It's red because it is reflecting the wavelengths that represent red. All the other wavelengths at this point are being absorbed. Similarly, for orange and yellow, you see things that are yellow. You have a look at my jacket. My jacket is a dark blue color. That means that the dark blue wavelengths that's at this end of the spectrum are being reflected off my jacket and my jacket is absorbing all the other colors. Now, if I hold, if I, if you have a look at this part of the board, it's white. The white that's over here is white because all of the wavelengths from here to here, from red all the way to violet, is being reflected. So none of it is being um, is being uh, absorbed. So this should give you a, a pretty good idea why. It is that if you wear black clothes, or if you have a black car, or the the um, or the, or the dark uh, colours heat up more than very light colours. That's because the light colours, like white, reflect the energy, and the dark colours absorb the energy. So if they absorb the energy, then they increase in heat. Think about that in relation to this issue of the moon having its own light. You can see on that basis, it's nonsense. Okay, if you um, are interested in having a much more detailed, a much more scientific look at, uh, at light and, um, and how that works and the physics of light, I'll be more than happy to do a, uh, a video on that. Um, obviously, I do that for, uh, for my students, uh, and uh, I don't always record these things for my students. So, if you specifically want, uh, would like me to describe uh, how light works, I'll be glad to do that. Just mention that in the comments. Okay, so, let's, uh, let's finish up. 
moon does not have its own light. And there is no mechanism, if it did, for the moon to, um, uh, uh, for something to turn the lights off of the moon on and off. That is just a fairy tale. That alone should give you pause. Okay. Now, the uh, moonlight is cool. Well, we've spent quite a bit of time talking about that, about why the moonlight is, uh, is not uh, cool. You're on the video. All right, come on. That's why I closed the door, okay? Please don't come back again. Thank you. When I'm finished, you can. All right? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yep. You should say good hello to the world. Okay. All right. So, the moon is transparent. Well, clearly it's not. Uh, if the moon was transparent, well, that would be problematic with regards to... Um, to things that uh, we put on the moon, like the retro reflectors. So that's nonsense. Okay, so um, I think we've pretty much covered uh, all of the uh, nonsense uh, about the moon. Obviously, there's plenty uh, of stuff on the moon about the moon that we can describe. Uh, but that not, was not the purpose of this particular video. I just wanted to look at these spe specific claims and, um, and if you want a more scientific um, uh, uh, explanation, I'll be happy to do that. But just at this level as it is, you, you need not go any further. You can see that it's complete nonsense. Thank you. If you're interested in more videos, um, please uh, subscribe and, uh, and hit the like button. Thank you.